I've been trying to find a way to replicate the look of those vintage wax tax trading cards, and I may have found a solution. <laughs> Greetings, people of the internet. I'm Scott with Surfworks Art Labs. Welcome, mad creators, to the underground laboratory where we create robots, aliens, zombies, and other imminent threats to humanity. We're going to do something with zombies today. We're going to take those and make a trading card set based on my comic book, which is a kids versus zombie comic story. It's like Goonies meets Night of the Living Dead. But I want to take, I want to do something a little special to go along with this comic, and that is to create a vintage wax pack trading cards. Now, I've done trading cards in the past, but um, I'm trying to figure out a way to do the whole package, and that package is a wax package. If you're familiar with the, way back in the days, the movie cards, baseball cards, they weren't that, that kind of foil that you get now, that foil and glossy stuff. They were screen printed on wax. Um, it's just a unique look that I want to capture. And... It, because they're done on wax and because it's not necessarily something you can print on like on your home printer I'm trying to figure out a way to do that and I may have discovered a way so I'm going to show you my technique so let's get to that right now all right today we're going to do something fun we're going to take a trip back back to the 80s maybe the 70s or even before that I'm trying to remember I guess I guess baseball cards would have been when this thing really started off and I don't know that could have gone all the way back to the 50s maybe even before that I'm not sure when but the thing is the trading cards that they have now you can call them they've been called bubblegum cards or sports cards or trading cards movie cards whatever whatever you want to call them um, I call it I just call them trading cards um, but the versions that you see today are very different than they used to be so I kind of want to take a trip back and do some vintage style trading cards and do do them right here by ourselves DIY um, so anyway these are some that I made for my first Kickstarter I actually ran uh, a I, there was a here for the second Kickstarter to do a series two and we didn't hit that stretch level which is kind of a bummer but anyway regardless of that I've got these cards that I that I did but and I usually I would just include these I just put them in a little plastic bag and and but I want to take it up a notch I want to actually have these look like they did back in the day back in the 80s 70s wherever how far ever back you want to go now this is a pack, I, this is a little more modern, actually these cards are, are fairly old, but they still have kind of the way that they do today where it's sort of a foil pack. Um, these are Bernie Wrightson cards, I am a big Bernie Wrightson fan. Um, beautiful cards, these are a lot glossier, a lot flashier, and that's the way they do things nowadays, which is, which is cool, I mean, you, I guess if you want good art, I'm not a big fan of gloss, I like flat, but, but anyway. Um, but these are cool cards, but nowadays they're kind of doing it like this with the foil and the glossy cards. But I want to go back in the days. Now, I want to show you some stuff. Uh, a friend of mine, Denny Rosselli, he goes by Den Man. I'll put a link to his stuff. Um, he's got this property called Space, Mo Space Monsters that he does. Uh, he does mini comics. He's got like the, the extra large comic and everything. Very cool stuff, um, but he also does a bunch of other retro stuff. So he's got action figures and kind of the old Star Wars card look to it. And then he did these, which really impressed me. And he had these professionally done. And I don't know who did them. I'm, I'm going to see if I can get that information from him. And if I can, I will put a link in the description. I know there's like a minimum order. I don't know if you have to order like 100 or 500 or whatever. So if you want to do something like this and sell them, uh, you can do that. Um, but anyway, this is actual a wax pack, and that's kind of how things used to be done. They were screen printed on wax. I don't know if these are technically screen printed, but whatever, however, whoever did these for him, um, they, they maybe they are screen printed. I don't know, but somehow they figured out a way to, to print on the wax. Uh, wax isn't necessarily something you can run through your home printer, so we're going to do a roundabout way. I kind of figured a, a, the closest approximation to how this is done, and I'm going to show you how I do it. But anyway, he had these professionally done, and um, yeah, really cool. You can see kind of the fold and everything. I'll have to look at that when I fold my own to make sure I get it right. But I just thought that was super cool, and like I said, if I can get that information, whoever did that, uh, who put these together for him, I will do that if you want to go the professional route. But we are going to do something a little different, and we are just going to figure out our own way of doing these. Now, let's start off with the cards themselves, because uh, you're already seeing the cards here. Um, I, I set these up. I created a template and everything. Now, I will actually make a template available for you guys if you want to... Um, 
if you want to make your own cards just so they're all lined up because I've got you know you've got the images on the front and on the back I've got these fun facts and everything but I will leave a link where you can download my templates for these and also the stickers that are going to go with these because we're going to make stickers too. Um, we're going to do it, we're going to try to do it exactly like they used to do back in the days. Everything you would get in those we're going to try to do here. So I will have a link available so you can do that if you want to design your own. Um, and you can either print them at home or these I actually sent out because I needed a ton of them. Um, so I actually sent these out to get printed. Uh, I, you know, I tried to get the look, it, sort of that look of the old paper. It's not exactly that old paper. If you look at the ones that uh, Denny had done, you can tell, and it's even some of the wax is coming off, but you can tell it's on that old kind of craft paper stock, which is the way they do it here. Let me, let me show you these here. Just so we can be super authentic, this is a set of... I've had these forever. This is a set of Raiders of the Lost trading cards. I've got the whole set here. Um, but let me show you. Let me pull one of these out. You can see it's a little glossy on the front, but on the back, you've got kind of that craft paper. And you see how that is? It's just printed on there, kind of a natural looking paper. So that's the look we're going to go for right here. Put that back in there. All right. So. In order to accomplish that, if we're going to print on our own, what we can do is we can just get some craft paper. I'm going to leave links to everything that I'm using here. There'll be Amazon affiliate links, so you can click on those and you can uh, you can do the stuff yourself. You can get all the products if you want. Um, and then some white cardstock. So what we're going to do here, we're going to use some spray mount. This is the 3M Super 77. It is permanent, so uh, this is probably the best stuff you can get. Um, that's not repositionable. So you got to be careful when you put it on because it'll, once you stick it down, it's it's stuck there pretty well. So, but this is the stuff I use. Again, links to all that stuff. Um, and then what I like to do is I like to get a strip of cardboard or whatever. I put some tape on it, and then you know you can just put your whatever you're going to be gluing. You can put that on there. Take it outside where it's well ventilated and then spray this stuff on there and then now obviously you want to print this stuff first if you're going to be printing at home I'm not going to really do that because like I said I've already had mine professionally printed but let's say you print your stuff here you spray mounted it and you're going to line it up with the, the craft paper here press that down like that and then this will be one solid thing. It'll make it a little thicker because those cards are a little thicker than the standard cardstock that you get to run through your uh, through your home printer. And then you will have something similar to this. Yours may even look better because you're gonna have the actual craft paper instead of just the um, that look of that that I tried to get. Um, and also I think in the file what I'll do is uh, I'll put a layered TIFF file for the template and I'll put sort of a craft looking paper so if you just want to print these out if you don't want to go get that you'll have that look if you want and that'll like I said it'll be layered so you can turn that off or on um, if you want that craft paper look or not. So then after that and in, in the template I put little crop marks here I don't know if you can see them because what's really difficult and this may take some trial and error but you have to make sure you get get these exactly right. When I laid out this template, it is directly centered, so front and back are the same as long as your printer lines this up properly, they should match up. You're gonna get your ruler. You can do this with a paper cutter. If you've got the kind that kind of cuts down like this, it's gonna be difficult because once you start cutting, you're gonna be cutting off your crop marks and then those go away and you don't know where to cut. Um, the ones that kind of roll, if you're skilled enough, you can roll it enough so it doesn't cut the end off because if you cut this all the way like that, and this piece falls off with all your other crop marks, you're gonna have a problem. So what I tend to usually do is I'll use an X-Acto knife and, um, and just a straight edge, metal. You don't wanna use a plastic ruler because the X-Acto will cut right through it. So you're just gonna line it up and don't, like I said, don't cut all the way through. Just go to, just past this first crop mark right here. You're gonna go like that. You're gonna cut that down. And then you're just going to follow all these marks. I'm not going to do the whole thing because it's just, it's repetitive, but you're going to go like that. And then just keep cutting, cutting all the way. Just go with all these crop marks, line them all up. And then eventually you'll have some cards like this. All right, so the old cards used to have stickers. And uh, so that's what we're going to do. 
Uh, again, links all in the description here. Uh, this is just some Avery uh, printer sticker paper. It's opaque white. And I just, this has already been cut down a little bit, but I printed, uh, I printed some of my characters here. And then I also, on cardstock, I printed out what is part of a puzzle. Now this isn't gonna be a full puzzle. Um, this is just gonna give us the look. I'm not gonna create every sticker. I mean, what basically, this is the extent of the cards. There's not a full set of like 50 cards or 100 cards or however many, this is it. So it's a pack. It's just to make it look like, you know, what, what those old cards look like. So I'm only gonna do one sticker, but I want it to look like there's a puzzle that belongs to it. Uh, Cause in the old days you can make a puzzle and put it all together. So that's why this image is cropped like that. Now I'm gonna show you how we can do the same thing with our spray adhesive and uh, put these together, but we gotta line it up. So we're gonna have to go to the light table to do that. Okay, so now we are at our light table and you can see I've got my paper here. These are the backs to the puzzle pieces. Um, I'm just gonna do one at a time. If you line these up okay, if you do the same way, if you use the same template that I use, say for the trading cards, you can do your stickers there as well. Um, I didn't do that, I did this before I laid all that out. So anyway, tur I'm turning on the light on the light table so that I can actually see through it because that way I can figure out how to line this up otherwise you know, I'm just kind of flying blind. So what I did, like I mentioned before, I took the uh, sticker outside, sprayed it with spray adhesive, and you can see the little Avery labels. We don't want that. That's why we can't really print on the back of the stickers as they are. That's why we need to create that separate back. Plus it's gonna make it a little bit thicker like the actual sticker cards were because they were on a little thicker stock. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna, you know, like I said, we spray that. I'm gonna take the sticker here, I'm gonna use the back of my X-Acto blade, um, just so I don't get it all over my fingers and everything. That's the whole idea of using the uh, cutout piece of cardboard. I am going to just eyeball this, but line it up. Once I get to where, it, where I want it, and you can see a little bit, it's showing through a little bit, I can press that down, and there we go. You can just turn off that light, and when you flip it around, you can see now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead, just the same I did with the cards, and I'm gonna cut out these, um, these stickers. So just cut them out from the back using my X-Acto blade. I don't have crop marks on this particular one because I'm just kind of following where the colors are here. Um, but like I said, you can use that template that I will provide that link for in the description to do that. Um, so it's pretty cool. I'm, I'm digging it. Now the other thing I want to mention is the stickers have sort of a kiss cut. You see how it, it cuts like that? That's the way the old stickers were. I used a Cricut machine to accomplish this. Now I know not everyone has a Cricut machine that can do that cut for you. Um, but you can, if you're skilled enough, and it might take some practice, just kind of go around the edge lightly. Not enough to cut through the whole piece of paper, but go around that with an X-Acto knife and you can sort of get that same effect. Okay, we've got our cards all cut out and we've got our sticker. So we're getting close. Just a few more pieces that we need to make this thing complete. One, of course, is the actual wax pack. Now, as I mentioned, you got wax paper here and these old cards were printed on wax. They were screen printed on wax. You cannot run this wax paper through a standard printer, you know, a home printer. So, but we are still gonna use this wax paper. And, and again, this is, this is a technique I came up with. If you guys have a better idea to a, how to accomplish this, please let me know. But I think this is gonna give us a very similar effect. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull off a piece of that wax paper because we are gonna use the wax paper. All right, I'm gonna set that aside. Now what I'm gonna do is I found some sticker paper. I already printed these out. Now this is a little different from the opaque white sticker paper that I use for, for these stickers. This is a transparent, it's kinda got a frosted look to it. It's transparent um, and I will create, I mean I will provide again a template for this. It's gonna have, it's gonna have all this fun information in here, but this part will be blank for you so that you can design whatever you want there. That will be included in the in the download. Um, anyway, so, and I made this a little yellow. It's a little off, you know, just, just kind of a, a, like a weathered yellow. The reason for that is because, like I said, these are, these, these sheets here are transparent because we kind of want with this particular one, like I said, it's a frosted look. So it's got it's got sort of that waxy feel to it. It's not actually wax, but it's got a frosted look. I can't, I'm can't. i trying to peel this off, but I can't. But anyway, uh, it is transparent. Um, 
So, uh, yeah, so the reason why I did the yellow is because you can't print on white. Um, it would be cool if we could, if we could print white without screen printing, which is the way the originals were. I don't know, I think the one Denny, Denny did. Yeah, I mean, you can see it's wax. It's a little darker, it's a little more opaque, the wax that they printed on, but he printed black. But you can print, you know, so that's a little more white. These are pretty much transparent, and also the wax paper is transparent. Um, so, uh, I printed a little yellow just so it would be a little more opaque, because like I said, you can't just print it white and have that your inkjet printer print white on here. So I had to go with a little off yellow, so that's what I did. Um, so what we're gonna do here is, first I'm just gonna go ahead and cut one of these sheets out. Like that, all right. And, now I gotta figure, let me see if I can, just wanna pull this off here. Here we go, yeah, now you can kinda see. See how it's a little transparent? Now, I'm gonna stick it onto this wax paper. Now, it's not, it sticks to it, oh, I mean, but it'll come off. I mean, if you peel them, peel them apart, it'll come off pretty well because really, it's hard to get anything to stick to wax other than itself. Um, but if you if you lay it down, it'll, it'll, it'll get a pretty good bond. I mean, if you wanna pull it off, it's not gonna be a problem to do that, but it should, it should stay on for our purposes, especially when we wrap it and everything. So now we've got that. Now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and I want to, you know, cut some of this stuff out here. So I'm going to give a little more overlap over here just so, so we have enough for folding it and everything. So, and then I'm just going to cut it through here. Just discard that. So now we have what is essentially like a wax pack. It's definitely waxy on the back and it does have sort of that frosted look. So it, it feels a little waxy and you can even, if you hold it up, you can even see some of that waxiness kind of showing through that transparent thing. Now we'll get into this when we start folding, but the problem is, one of the problems is because it is transparent, even with the darker green, you're going to see some of that show through here. So one, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put like a white card in here. The original ones didn't have that, but that's just kind of, you know, I'm just going to have to deal with that just to kind of make it a little more presentable. And like I said, if you have a better way to do this, let me know. All right, so we've got that, but there is one crucial element that we have not yet done, and that is that nasty old bubble gum. If you've ever opened one of these card packs, you can see right here, I've got it in here. I've got nine cards, one sticker, one stick of bubble gum, all right? <laughs> so I was stretching, or I was, you know, I was trying to figure out how I was gonna get this bubble gum, because that, that bubble gum they use was a very unique sort of bubble gum. It's not just like a stick of Wrigley's or something. It looks very different. It's bubble gum, but it's in a strip. It is kind of in a strip like Wrigley's, but it's bubble gum. Um, and it's all, usually all dried up and it's pretty nasty. And the closest thing I found is this stuff here, this bubble tape. If you open it up, that's kind of what it looks like. It's got sort of that powdery look to it. So I'm gonna pull a strip off of this here. Let me see, I thought I had, yeah, here, I've got a knife here. I think it might be slightly thinner than the actual stuff that they used to have, but I'm just gonna cut that there and make a nice cut. Make a nice cut there too. And then we've got our bubble gum. We can stick that there. Again, we're gonna put that white over that. And now here's the trick, <laughs> is folding this thing. Now, let's see if we can get this right. Because there's a, there is definitely a trick to folding this. I'm gonna kinda eyeball and see how they did it here. It looks like, looks like it's been kind of folded over like this. So, how did, is that the, oh yeah, it fell out, okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna Fold this over a little bit like that. It's, it kind of looks like it's almost like you're wrapping a present. Fold that over there too. Do that 
here. All right, and then this part looks like it's, yeah, I don't know if this is, like I said, this is the, <laughs> this is the part that we might have to experiment a little bit with. I think that needs to, I need to have that fold going a little better than that. See how it looks in the front. It's a little off-centered, but the thing is with these old wax packs, the way they're the way they're stuck together is by melting the wax. But since we have uh, the front of this isn't, we're we're attaching the wax to the front of this and melting it isn't going to work. So what I'm getting here is some double stick tape. I'm going to go in here like this. I'm going to stick the double stick tape on there and press down and there we go. So that one's a little off. Again, we gotta, we gotta practice a little bit. Here is, uh, here's one that's, that I did previous and it's a little closer to what we're looking for. But yeah, there you have it. That is how to make your own vintage wax packs. And one more time, I, like I said, I'm gonna leave all the links to all the things that I used here, plus the link to that template. And if I can get the information for the company that actually does these, I'll leave that there as well. So hope this is helpful. Hopefully, I'd, I'd love to see if you guys do this stuff too and make your own cards and do this technique. Please let me know and uh, you know, send me a link to somewhere where I can see a picture of what you've come up with or whatever, because. Uh, these are super fun. Okay, so that's my way of making DIY wax packages at home. Now, I have a question for you guys. Do you, is there anything from your childhood that maybe they don't make anymore that you kind of want to recapture? And it doesn't matter how old you are. There's Granted, there is something that, that you used to love that they don't make anymore. And is there a way to kind of you know, replicate that? I'm curious. Let me know in the comments section, and I will see you guys later. That is all. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw and you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. Also, you can follow me at Silkworks on social media. Do you like making comics? Then go to Silkworks.com and pick up the Comic Maker Starter Kit. It's packed full of fonts, brushes, templates, and more. And best of all, it's totally free.